Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Mocking with Wiremock.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about how we can start using the admin interface of Wiremock.net. One of the most exciting feature of Wiremock.net, which set apart from other mocking tool, is its admin interface itself. Now, I'll tell you what I really mean about that. So, if we just go to the documentation of Wiremock.net, which we have never seen in this series so far. So, I'm just going to go and search for Wiremock.net and GitHub page something like this so you end up here and if i just go to the first link you'll notice that they have got this whole page which is going to tell you what this wiremock.net is and they have got some documentations about the wiremock.net which includes the stubbing templating of the responses and admin api reference so this is the one thing which i really wanted to get into this time so if i just go to the wiki of the admin api reference you will notice that they have got this admin API reference, which will also tell you that the Wiremock server dot start with admin interface method will make this particular mocking server to give you some admin interface, which you can access to. So you can do quite a lot of things. So they have given some details about how you can use it with the preferred REST client. If you wanted to, you can set the bearer token for the Azure authorization. And then you can call the API using the get settings API of, for that matter. And you can also use the Fluent Builder, which can help you do these kind of thing. And they have got some supported interface for that matter. The one which I'm going to talk about is not about how you can use it with the client API or the Fluent Builder, but rather I'm going to show you about these supported interfaces, which you can use it while you use this Wiremark.net. I'll tell you what I really mean about that. So if you just go back to our code that we have been talking all these days, you will notice that we are setting up the Wiremox server with the start method. So we're not using the start with an admin interface. So if you hit this dot over here, remember the first lecture of this course, I was talking about something called a start with admin interface, start, and there is something called a start with admin interface and read static mappings. So these are three different methods available within the Wiremox server itself. We'll talk about the start with admin interface and read static mapping later in this course even from the console interface or the command line interface but i'm just going to show you something about the start with admin interface not using this method itself i mean you can now set everything from within the start method itself as well the only thing that you need to do it is you remember there are a bunch of wiremox server settings that you can do within this particular class file as a properties you can enable the admin interface here as well. So you can just type something called as start admin interface, this property, and then you can set this to true. So if you do that, which means this is going to be invoking an admin interface for the Wiremox server, right? This is the only thing which I have to do this time. And guess what? In the start, uh, the or maybe the console line, I'm just going to write this guy over here. And I'm going to say started wiremock.net server. And I'm just going to put one more console.write line over here, just in case, where I'm going to say all the stub mappings are bound. And then I'm also going to say hit any key to close the server. So these are the things I wanted to put it over here this time. And now if I start the wiremock.net server, you will notice that it says that started wiremock.net server, all the step mappings are bound, hit any key to close the server. So if you just hit this, it's going to just close the server because it's a read line, as you know. So it's just going to close the application for us, which I'm not going to do it right now. I just want to keep this server up and running. And now if I go to the postman over here, and if I hit this send button, it's just going to remain exactly the same. But the one thing which you can actually do it this time is you can just use the supported interface where it says there is something called a slash underscore underscore admin slash settings will give you some settings of the wiremock.net. So what I really mean about that. So if you just go back here, just type the underscore underscore admin. And if you hit send, it's not going to give you anything very interesting for you. But if you just go and type settings 
and hit send now you will see there is a settings coming up it says that use regex extender is set to true the client certificate mode is set to zero and also says the accept any client certificate as false so this is something which is required if you're going to have any certificates installed within your server which is the mock server exclusively if you're going to be testing your application based on specific certificate it is going to be very very helpful while we try doing that in the azure ade services but for now we don't really have to worry about that because we have not gone to that extent so well that is about the settings but where does this thing very very helpful comes in just think about this if you know that all these days we have been writing so many steps over here you know that these are the steps exist within our code something like you have got some headers you also have got a step for the headers using a different path that you can pass in using the what is called as a get operation you can also do the same thing as a put operation and then you also have a stub with the slash test over there and then you have got a stub with the regex matcher wildcard matcher and you also have got a login operation and rejecting with the login operation get address and so forth and so forth so how do i get all these stubs mapping which is been bound to this wiremark.net server well guess what that's when this wiremark.net server's admin interface comes in very handy all you have to do it in here is just type mappings and if you hit send this time you will notice that it's going to give you a bunch of operation or methods this time see all the matcher comes in it says the request with path as matcher as a wildcard matcher for the test and it says ignore case as false so there is something happening behind the scene already so there is a matcher for this path as a wildcard matcher even though you don't specify it and for the test it says this is what it is and it's a get method that you have set in for the test operation and the similarly you also say the response should be a body destination same as the source and you have got a body as welcome to wiremark.net and it has got a headers with a content type as application json so you did all these things during the time frame number over here that's exactly what you can see it in the wiremark.net's admin interface with all the mappings that you can see and the same thing happens for the other stubs that you have got for instance over here for the headers there's a get operation and then you have got a response something like this just go back down over here the one which is fresh in your mind the last lecture that we have discussed about the response where the body as json see that now the body is as json and this is the value and this is the header that you have set in for the pattern of the get by id sorry I just click that that's why it's coming in but yeah that's what it is so all these values are coming in because you have got the admin interface you can use this value that you are seeing over here and you can save this into a file and you can use this as a static mapping for your wiremark.net to spin up and that's going to serve these requests automatically i know it doesn't sound quite great at the moment but while we talk about static mapping and how you can invoke that i will tell you what i really mean about that but for now at least you have got the idea of how you can use the admin interface to get the settings and also how you can get all the mappings and you can also delete a mapping using the delete operation and then you can say all the mappings that if you want to delete to and you can specify a specific mapping with its guid as you can see over here you can delete that as well so you have got all the guids as you can see so this is the guid so you can just say get and then just put the guid and if you hit send it's just going to give you that specific stub alone and similarly you can delete it if you wanted to you can just say that and if you hit send it's just going to delete that particular mapping for you so now if you just go back and try to do a get operation and if you hit send 
that particular mapping will not be there. And even if you try to search it, it's not going to be there. But guess what? If you start the server second time, it is just going to be there. It's not going to go and delete the code that you have written over here. It is just for that particular specific instance of the execution of the wiremark.net. So hope you have got the idea of how you can use the wiremark.net's admin interface to make things much, much easier during the debugging of your code using wiremark.net.